Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to discuss HP printers. I have not used an HP printer since my HP DeskJet 722C from 1997 the last time that I thought it was worthwhile to purchase an HP product. And this is something that's been going on for a very long time. You've been tracking the history of this type of thing on this channel for a while. This shows up on Reddit six days ago. HP have updated their printers to outright ban non Hewlett Packard ink. They no longer show the can't guarantee quality message, but instead cancels your print completely until you insert an HP ink cartridge. Also, I can genuinely appreciate the typo here. The person typing this was so mad that he didn't even notice he typoed insert as inset, which again, I don't blame him for. I'd be pissed too if my product told me what I was and wasn't allowed to do with it. After contacting HP, they advise this due to the recent update of all printers. So this is, this is one of the really insidious things here is that you could have actually purchased a printer that worked with any ink cartridge of your choice. You could have updated the software for your printer and now your printer no longer takes ink cartridges of your choosing. So you bought the product working you installed a software update, and the software update disabled core functionality of your device and removed your freedom to be able to use it in the manner that you see fit. Imagine if you have a vehicle, and you're able to choose any radio preset that you want on that particular vehicle. And then one day, you go into your car, and there's a software update, and all you hear is Rick Astley never going to give you up. Like, anyway... I don't even know where to begin with this. So let's just go over what HP has to say about it. So these printers use something called dynamic security. Dynamic security relies on the printer's ability to communicate with the security chips or electronic circuitry on the cartridges. HP uses dynamic security measures to protect the quality of the customer experience, maintain the integrity of our printing systems, and protect their intellectual property. Dynamic security equipped printers are intended to work only with cartridges that have new or reused HP chips or electronic circuitry. The printers use the dynamic security measures to block cartridges using non-HP chips or modified or non-HP electronic circuitry. Reused, remanufactured, and refilled cartridges that reuse the HP chip or electronic circuitry are unaffected by dynamic security. Dynamic security. This is something we talk a lot about here on this channel because anytime I tend to talk about some measure that gives you more hardware or software freedom, your ability to fix what you own, your ability to choose what parts you put into what you own, the manufacturer will always talk about security. Safety, security, safety, security. And I'm actually glad that HP did this. I'm really happy that they named a feature that doesn't allow you to use aftermarket ink in your own effing printer, dynamic security. Because what it does is it turns the concept of security when used by a large tech company to justify taking away your freedom, and it turns it into a meme. And once it's a meme, it's easier to get across to customers, regulators, and pretty much anybody that when you hear a 100 billion or trillion dollar company claim that they are taking away your freedom for security, that it is bullshit. I want that to have its power taken away as a buzzword, and it will if it gets abused to the extent that it's being abused here. Right to Repair is honestly a very small subsection of this channel at this point. Right to Repair is a very small piece under the general umbrella of ownership and freedom. Do you own what you have purchased? Do you have the freedom to do what you wish with what you own? Every time I mention this, there's somebody in the comments, This, and you'll see it in every video, there's always that one guy that just nobody likes, that never adjusted the society, that goes, well, I mean, you technically shouldn't be able to do whatever you want with what you want. Like, yes, we get it. When you purchase a firearm, you should not be able to use that firearm on your five-year-old defenseless daughter. That being said, when you purchase a printer, it used to be normal. It used to be considered the way things are supposed to be that I could put whatever ink cartridge of my choosing that I want into that printer unless the shit was made out of radium. I should be able to put whatever I want in my printer to be able to print. They're not protecting my security. They're not protecting my safety. They're protecting nothing other than the security of their own profit margins when you can't buy any other ink for their printer but theirs. And if we don't start pushing back against this in every area of our life, then we will be consumed by it in the future in every area of our life. You will own nothing and be happy is not something where you're just gonna snap your fingers and one day have no property. It is this slow creep over time where every single company realizes that they could milk you a little bit more if they take away some of your freedom and then every other company going, huh, HP did it and people are still buying their stuff and they're still worth tens of billions of dollars. Maybe we could get away with it. And then you have everybody else do it. And then you wind up living in a world where you can't choose what ink you put into your own printer, no matter what brand you buy. 
I don't want to live in that world. Now, when they mention intellectual property, I actually had a really interesting conversation with a gentleman named Stefan Kinsella at an event that I was at a few months ago. And he has a really cool book that I read a very, very long time ago, back when I was in college. It's called Against Intellectual Property. It's an amazing book. And one of the things that he was talking about, I'll leave a link to this book down below for anybody interested. One of the things he was talking about, I was bringing up the whole patent case with Samsung, since Samsung is trying to use patents to destroy the independent repair industry. We were just asking him for what he thought about some of these things. And honestly, I, I, I've read his work. I kind of know what he's going to say. But one of the things that he brought up was printers. He said, you know, there'll be a chip that's in the cartridge and there'll be another chip that's in the printer so that they could claim that there is some sort of patent infringement being done when somebody makes an aftermarket cartridge or intellectual property or this, that, or the other, when in reality, this doesn't actually add any functionality or benefit or innovation to the consumer. The innovation is the DRM itself. They've essentially took something that used to work totally fine, a printer, they added two chips to the printer that do not benefit the user experience in any way, shape, or form. It actually restricts the user experience. They patent these things, and then they claim at the end of it that, you know, you're infringing our patents or intellectual property when you decide that you want to use an ink cartridge of your choice in your printer. We have gotten to the point where intellectual property patents and everything else are not being used to innovate, but it's actually regressive. It's being used as a way to monopolize what you own and keep you from being able to do what you want with what you've purchased. Now, I know what a lot of you are going to say. A lot of you are going to say, if you don't like what HP does, man, why are you complaining about HP? Why don't you buy something else? Yeah, maybe you should buy a Dymo printer where they have DRM in the paper, not just the ink. Maybe you want to buy a Canon. Oh, wait, never mind. Their printers have DRM in them. And not only do they have DRM in them, but during the pandemic where there was a chip shortage, they actually had to release stuff so that people could get around the DRM in their printers because they weren't able to produce cartridges that had the chip in it to satisfy the DRM in their own fucking printer. So Canon got owned there, and I hope HP winds up getting owned like this as well. My point here is that this is not something that is unique to HP. This is something you will see spreading to every single company. Now, if I were going to steel man the argument for HP doing this, there is the argument that all of these companies lose money on the printer so that they can make money on the ink. And this is the problem when you have that kind of race to the bottom. If I were to really kind of black pill steel man it, there's this thing that I used to call the cycle of despair when I had my supply company 13 years ago. You have to sell something cheaper in order to be able to get more sales. So if you're on eBay, I remember I used to sell screens on eBay. If I have a screen for sale of $55, and somebody else has it for $54.50. At $55, I'll get like three sales a day. If I lower it to $54.40, so I'm 10 cents cheaper than my competitor, I will go from selling three of that a day to selling like 400 of it a day. And if my competitor lowers his price to $54.39, I'll go back to selling like 10 a day because so many people sort thy lowest price. And many of the algorithms used on these websites for e-commerce, they'll often rank products and sellers based on the ratio of people that click to the ratio of people that buy. And one of the things that gives you a great click to buy ratio is when you are the cheapest. So people will do whatever they can to be as cheap as humanly possible. The problem is once you have done this thing where you have to become as cheap as humanly possible in order to get any sales, at that point, now you have to figure out another way to make money. So if somebody else comes along and sells a better product that doesn't abuse the consumer, they may not actually make any sales. The honest to God red pill here might be that we bring this on ourselves. The first person to raise their price loses the price war, gets less sales, less market domination, less uh, relevance, less people see the product, so they less people to recommend it, and you wind up destroying yourself as a company in the short term, even if that is what would be long-term beneficial, by upping your price a little bit. A lot of people are not willing to pay extra for this type of value because of two things. A, they may not actually read the listing. And one of the things I learned when I was selling on eBay and Amazon, virtually nobody reads the listing, but I, I, I could do a 20 minute rant on that. Uh, nobody reads the listing. And B, even if they do read the listing, they may not actually believe you. You know, Peter Thiel mentions this in Zero to One. If you make a product, it can't just be 5 or 10 or 15% better because even if it is actually better, people may not necessarily believe that it is better and it may not be enough for them to switch. I remember when I was selling things on eBay and Amazon, I would say, we test the screen to make sure it has no stuck pixels. Our competitor states in their listing that they will allow up to 15 stuck pixels. If you get a bad screen, we will overnight you a replacement before you return the old one and include a return label in the box for it. Your competitor says it'll take 15 days and you pay for shipping. I included all of this stuff in there. If I was literally one cent more than my competitor, I would get three sales a day. 
The moment I lowered my price to be just five cents less than my competitor, I crap you not, I would get 300 to 400 sales a day of the exact same product. I think the honest to God red pill here might be that it's not just the companies being evil and wanting to make more money, because by all means they are, but the reason they're using these specific models to do so and coming up with ways to undercut their own profits on the front end and then kind of abuse their customers in the back end are because it's what we ask for. Think about everything else I talk about here on this channel when I talk about stuff that Google does or other companies do where they're abusing you and taking your data. Rather than charging you up front to have one gigabyte of email storage, rather than charging you up front for maps or any of the other services you have, Google tells you everything is free enjoy play around with all of this stuff that cost us billions of dollars to create it's all free you don't have to pay a dime we're just going to collect data on every single aspect of your effing life and save it so that people can advertise to you based on having an exact profile of who you are because that's not creepy at the end of the day i genuinely believe that while all these companies are greedy a part of it is our own greed we want to be able to buy a printer cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and they wouldn't be doing it if the shit didn't sell. But it does sell. A part of it, a small part of it, is us. We need to stop focusing on buying something based on price and start focusing on buying things based on value. But above all, we have to start sharing this type of information with each other to the point where when your friend says that he's buying a Dymo printer, let him know. They, hey, listen, man. You shouldn't buy something with DRM in the printer. This isn't some sort of just pro-freedom meme kind of thing. It actually kind of matters. Hey, man, you probably shouldn't buy a Canon printer. If there's a chip shortage, you're going to have to start hacking your printer to try to get around the DRM in it. And hey, listen, you shouldn't buy an HP printer because if you buy it, if you buy this piece of crap, it could actually work. You install an update, the printer doesn't work, and you can't print what you want it to print, even though that printer used to work. We have to be willing to spend a little bit more money on something that doesn't abuse us. And the companies that don't abuse us need to be a little bit more willing to have that front and forward in their marketing so that it is obvious. If you're a printer company and you're gonna charge a little bit more for your printer, have it in the product photo. We don't abuse you. We don't screw around on ink. Make it very, very obvious. And then we need to start as consumers saying, you know what, that printer costs 20 bucks more. I'm gonna take it. I'm not going to sort by lowest price. I'm not going to just buy the thing that has the most stars on Amazon when half of those reviews are probably fake anyway. I'm not going to buy the item that's the best price. I'm going to buy the item that's the best value. Okay, in my experience in e-commerce, seeing the way the game is played, seeing how something being even 40 cents cheaper can result in 400 times as many sales, I understand why the printer companies are doing that race to the bottom. As consumers, we need to start answering back and, say, and sending a message we are willing to pay to not be abused. And if you make it obvious that you're not going to abuse us, I'll spend 50 bucks extra on my printer. I don't care. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. This is Oreo, by the way. Yeah. It's not as easy to take this mic out as it was my other one because it had a shock mount separate from the mic. I may set that up later so that I can take the mic out and put it next to Oreo when he purrs so you can hear him purr. He's such a cute cat. He doesn't clean himself. That's the problem with Oreo. Every other, I bought a bunch of cat wipes because he doesn't clean himself and it's, it, it produces, it really does create messes, but he's so cute. He's so cute. It's hard to hold it against him, honestly. Anyway, that's about it.